Hi everybody, you're watching Cad Roll Hunter, and I have a box of dimes, but this might be a really short hunt. Stay tuned. Hi everybody, this is James, and you're watching my channel, Cad Roll Hunter, and I've got a box of dimes I got from the bank, and if you notice, there's something about this here. This is sealed and stamped by the Royal Canadian Mint. Normally, I wouldn't want to take this because what this tells me is that this box is full of uncirculated coins from the mint. So I normally wouldn't do that because that's going to make for a pretty boring hunt. But this is dated 2111. So I think November of 2021, I think. So these are all going to be 2021 dated coins. Why I'm curious and why I took it home, because of course I can always just take it back. I'm going to open this up and see, is it possible that this is filled with the Blue Nose Under Sale Commemorative Dimes, the color version and the non-color version, their lower mintage, and I just don't know. So we're going to get in here and see. If not, we're probably not going to open any of these up. Well, we might not open them up anyway, and I might just marry this with another dime box hunt, but I thought we'd take a look at this box and see what we get. All right, I figure we may as well see if we can get a live opening on this, a one-handed live opening. I'm going to try to get in, break the tape, which I think I should be able to do, possibly. And then we can look together and see what we've got in here. Okay. Well, it looks like we have got a full box of uncirculated 2021, but they appear to be all the double date, so I am going to just open, pull one up here. I'm not going to open it, I don't think. There is a full roll of 2021, 1921, 2021, uncirculated Canadian dimes. So it doesn't look like we're going to have any of the blue nose under sale and any of the color. And I think maybe what I'll do is grab just a roll or two of these, put them in my collection. I'll probably take some of the ones that I found in other rolls and just roll them up and put them here because a couple rolls of this is gonna be pristine. These should all be nice condition. So I'll do that, we'll get this out of the way. I'll see if I can get more dimes to hunt. So fast forward about a week and I've been trying to get some dimes and my first attempt was not very successful. This is all I could get. So uh, luckily I went to another bank and I got a full box and opening it up, I can see this looks far more promising. I just took a peek at a couple of these rolls to see what was going on and there's some interesting edges. There's color variation we got. Looks like we might have older, newer and US and looking at this, it's hard to tell because you can see some shiny edges, but um, yeah, we've got a variety of circulated coins. So we're going to have a dime hunt after all. So let's get right in and see what we can find in here. So in roll number one or 51 of this two box hunt, well, we didn't really hunt the other box, so we can't really count that, but we got a couple Americans back to back. So we've got a 2008 Denver and then a kind of corroded, what do we got here? 2020 Philadelphia. Roll number two, and I'm just doing an edge check and I've got an, edge that looks interesting it's this little bit darker one here we'll lay it down and see it looks a little bit different than the rest this is promising but it could be nothing we'll see okay i laid it down and we're going to take a peek at this guy right not that one though that looks like a nice one but the one right behind it is the one i was looking at and it is nothing it is just a nickel composed dime Still in roll number two, we got a really nice, shiny looking 1988. I will set that one aside for sure. Roll number four is going to give us our first colored blue nose. And look at that. There we go. 2021 colored blue nose dime. Roll six. And we're starting to find, of course, the 2022s in circulation. And this one looks really nice. I'll set it aside. I think I only found one or two in my last dime hunt. So I'd like to hold on to a few of these nice, brilliant, largely uncirculated dimes. And, uh, but we still want to see if we can find other things. And of course, when a coin starts out in circulation, like the 2022s, this is when we want to look carefully. I'm not aware 
of any errors or varieties in the 2022s necessarily, but people will start to find things, of course, like uh, die cracks and things like that um, at some point in time. And uh, you'll want to look for things like blank planchets. We could have done that in the last box, but I wasn't really keen on going through 50 rolls of 2021s just to see if we found uh, a blank planchet. But of course, that would have been a cool find if I'd found one. So anyhow, we'll carry on. Roll seven, we got a transition year 1968. We got to check to see if that could be silver. And it is absolutely not because it is magnetic. It is nickel. We got to keep looking for that silver one. And in that roll, we got a few Americans, a 2011P, a 2005P, and a 1987 Denver. I won't show all of the Americans we get, because when I looked in this box, I could see um, on the sides of these rolls I showed earlier, there's a bunch of American copper edges. So we're probably going to find some, but if there's anything interesting, of course, I will definitely show you that. I just laid down roll number eight, and it's got a couple of interesting edges. So one looks to be a really dirty something, some kind of corrosion. It's a 2010, nothing interesting. And this one here looks different. This one is a 2019, but look at the finish on this. I feel like this might be a mint error. Let me know what you think in the comments below, but just the coloring on this appears as though it might be missing one of the uh, layers. This is multi-ply plated steel, so it should have several layers on it but the coin the coloring is consistent along the edge and the obverse and the reverse i'll put it under the scope and we'll take a closer look and let me know what you think if this might be some sort of a mint error all right so there we can see our 2019 the coin appears to be in really good condition there's no real circulation wear on it and the coloring is completely consistent this could be a chemical reaction with something but I'm not quite so sure, and I'll flip it over. And again, it's in exceptional shape, um, but it very possibly might be missing a layer. And it looks to have like a slight little, maybe a die crack under the eye in Elizabeth. Um, let me know what you think. This is, I'll set this aside. This one's very interesting. I th think this could possibly be a mid error. Roll 10, we found another American. I said I'd only bring you in if it was interesting, and it is because we've got a 2022 Philadelphia. This is my first 2022 US dime. And just a few coins later, a 2022 Canadian. So this roll is definitely newer, and we might find something, uh, some 2022s to pick from to put in our album. And have a look there, same roll. It's not a 2022. This is going to be a 2021 with some color on it. That's another great find. And just behind it, the Blue Nose Under Sail non-color version. And look at those waves. This might be my favorite Canadian dime of all time. And one of my subscribers just suggested, wouldn't it be great if Canada updated that iconic Blue Nose dime with this design moving forward? And I'd be supportive of that. That is a really, really cool dime. Same roll, and we can file this under the miscellaneous category. Somebody has defaced this one. I can't tell. It looks like they've sanded it or something on both sides so that has been damaged uh looks like a 2015 but in any case somebody again had a little too much time on their hands i just put roll number 11 in my hands and this one has an edge that looks more worn right by the tip of my thumb and the coloring is just a little bit different and i'm hoping we might have something older and silvery here we'll find out so I've laid that roll down and we're going to see if we can find that older edge, which I think was a little bit further back here. I think it is this guy right here. And it is, look at that. We have got 80% silver in the roll. There is the Laureate portrait and let's see what we got. It is a 1953, I think. Let's put it under the scope and see. And it is absolutely a 1953, which means we can check to see if it is one of two varieties, the shoulder fold or no shoulder fold. So we have 50s silver, a 1953 Canadian dime, which is wicked. I'm going to flip it over and we're going to have a look at the queen here. And it looks like this is going to be, I was going to say the shoulder fold. That looks like it's just a scratch on there. So what we need to do is check the uh, lettering, the I here. 
has no flares, this is going to be the shoulder fold variety. If the eye had more of a serif or a flared sort of end to the, uh, the top and the bottom, it would be a no shoulder fold. So we have a 1953 shoulder fold Canadian silver dime, wicked. Roll over 12 and we're gonna have something interesting in here too because we've got an edge right by my thumb that's just a little bit different. The reading is uh, less spaced out. I think we've got a foreign coin here. All right, let's take a look and see what we got. It was somewhere in and around there. There we go. That is it. 10 cents with a bird on it. We'll flip that over. And it's from Barbados. And that's a 1992. Very cool foreign find. We've got silver. We got US. We got non-US foreign. This box is looking pretty good already. We got color. Pretty sweet. Roll number 13. We're going to have our second non-colorized blue nose under sale. Roll 17, and there's a 2017. That's the Wings of Peace with that stylized maple leaf that sort of looks like a bird. I just pulled out roll number 18, and I've got it in my hand here. I haven't opened it, but I think we might have more silver. That second coin on the edge looks very interesting, and I think we might have silver number two. You can see how much brighter and whiter it is than the other coin beside it. So let's open it up and take a peek. All right, so I've laid it down and that second coin looks very promising. It looks like the Tierra portrait and it does look silvery for sure. Let's flip it over and there it is. Holy mackerel, I might wanna say. A 1967, another silver dime. This is our second silver of the box, which is awesome. Very last coin of roll number 20. We found a whole bunch of 2022s and double date 2021s in this roll, and I wondered if we might find a blue nose under sale. And this one is our fourth. Roll number 21 is going to give us a really nice looking 1991. That is pretty nice. And I see an American edge a little bit behind there. So while I got you, we may as well just take a peek. This is going to be maybe our 14th US. This one is a 1999 Philadelphia. Same roll. There's our fifth Blue Nose Under Sale non-color version. Roll 23, and I just about tossed this colorized dime into my discard pile. You got to be really careful because the obverse is the same as all other modern dimes. So you really have to flip them all over and be very careful or you'll miss something really cool like this colorized 2021 Blue Nose. We're at the halfway point. This is roll number 25, and... Lots of interesting edges here. We've got several US for sure, but I think there's one edge that looks promising right by my thumb. It's hard to tell. I'll get in. I'll just start at the front and we'll work our way back, but that one looks like it could be interesting. Could we have our third silver of the box at the halfway point? That would be incredible. Okay, so I laid it down and I don't think I can wait to just work through because I think we do have another silver here. Looking at that edge, let's just take a peek. What do we have? And we do. It's a 1962, another Laureate portrait. That is awesome. Let's just take a closer look at that. So there it is under the scope, and it is verified in 1962. Dimes can be really tough sometimes. Obviously, our last box, all uncirculated, nothing there. And they're hard to look at. The dates are really small. But every once in a while, you get a box like this where you find more silver. And in this case, three silver so far. We're only halfway through. Is it possible we could tie my all-time record? My best performance for silver in a, in a dime box, sorry, is four. And you've seen that on a video on my channel. Could we do that again? Could we even better that? We'll find out. Same roll. There's another 2021. And this is our fourth US of this roll so far, 1996 Philadelphia. Roll 26, and I got a pretty nice looking 1994 here, but why I wanna show it to you is because there is a die chip in the second nine. We'll take a closer look under the scope. I've already used the loop to look at this just to be sure, but we'll see what is going on here. All right, there it is. And I hope it comes across here, but basically right here in the nine, at first I thought it was like a gouge or a scratch, but it is raised. So that's a die chip right in the nine. That's an interesting little find. I'll hold that aside. I like to see interesting die chips, die cracks, things like that. We don't see a lot of them on many Canadian coins, but they do exist. Obviously dies break, dies get damaged. 
Uh, here's an example of right in the middle of that nine, we've got a die chip, which creates this raised pocket of metal uh, in that nine. Roll number 29 is gonna give us another blue nose commemorative, the non-colored version. And this might be, I'm gonna say maybe our ninth of the box so far. Same roll, we've been getting a bunch of 1968s. I haven't showed them all to you, but we may as well look at this one. It doesn't have the look of silver, but we can know for sure that it is actually not silver because it's stuck to my magnet. Roll number 30, and I think we're going to have our fourth silver. I see an edge right here that looks very silvery. We've got all sorts of interesting edges. I think most of these are gonna be copper US edges, so we'll find lots of of interesting things for the board on here, but one of them I think might be our record tying fourth silver. So let's get in and find out. All right, we got that laid down and I think our edge, oh, absolutely, we struck silver again and it is a nice one. Look at that, it's got some scratches on it, but lots of luster, nice and shiny, no toning or tarnish on it, circulated. But we've got another mackerel 1967 and of course, this could be 50% or it could be 80%. We're just not going to be able to know easily. But that is our second 67, our fourth silver of the box. And that ties my all-time best for silver coins in a single box coin roll hunt. Second last coin of that roll is another colorized dime. And that's going to go along with six US we found and that bright, shiny silver centennial commemorative. Awesome. Roll 31, I didn't see any silver by the edge check, but I'm seeing some color peeking out here. We got another, oh, and behind that one, two, two in this roll at least. Maybe there'll be more. Same roll, really nice looking 1980. We're gonna just check this to see if it's the small date or the large date, or I should say the wide zero or narrow zero is really what we're looking for. All right, what we got is the wide zero, and there are a few markers to see this by. One is that the tail of the nine is curving up and not sort of down and fine. And the circles, the holes in the eight are perfect circles. That is the wide zero, the, the common one. Uh, but this one is in really nice condition. I'll be keeping this one aside for sure. Roll 34 is gonna give us a pretty nice looking 1978. Certainly much better than the average of that age. Roll number 37 appears to have maybe three or four US coins, but we got our eighth color blue nose commemorative. Roll 36 is gonna give us our oldest American and just one year off of silver, 1965. Roll 37 is going to have our 37th US. This one, a 2012 Philadelphia. And you can see it right behind there, another color blue nose and this looked like it was a pretty nice looking 80s well, it's circulated it's an 86 we want to find better than that roll number 40 is going to give us another foreign coin i didn't notice it but it is a little bit smaller than the dimes and it doesn't appear to have any reading so it is a 1971 swiss coin helvetica it is five cents we'll look it up there you go when in doubt check numista five rappen from switzerland it is copper nickel that is a cool find for the hunt our second foreign that's not an american and that's just a classic design too i think roll number 42 is going to give us another four and the third coin from the end there is a little bit bigger and has some different readings so i'm going to try to just put this down gently and then see if I can get that coin out and see what it is. It looks to be from Singapore, 1993, 10 cents. Another cool find. I don't think I found anything from Singapore, Singapore before. Same roll, another really nice looking 1979. Roll 44, we are well into the double digits in color. This is our 11th color dime. I think that's the best we've done so far. I just picked up roll 47, and I think we're going to have my record-breaking fifth silver right in the middle there. It looks pretty white. It looks different than the rest, 
Let's see if we can break the record and get five dimes in one hunt. Five silver dimes, that is. And I got it right here. Let's see what this is going to be. Will we break a record? If I throw them all over the place. And you can probably see it. A 1961 Laureate portrait, silver dime. Our fifth silver for the board. One, two, three, four, five. That is awesome. 80% silver, a 1961. Incredible. And the end of that roll is a 2021 Blue Nose. So, like, this isn't a collection dump or anything like that. We found lots of brand new coins. Look at, we got stacks of these 2021s. I didn't pull out any of those double date 2021s. Found lots of shiny 2020s and 2019s and a bunch of 2022s. So these silver coins are just the coins that happen to be circulating around. Somehow, people have them, they're spending them, they're getting out there, they're getting rolled up, and I'm finding them. So they are out there, even in Canada, even with our Alloy Recovery Program, you can still get silver in 2022. All right, last roll, roll number 50, and doing an edge check. Lots of interesting color on here, and I don't want to get too excited, but... This second last coin in this roll looks like it could be an older silver edge. And I don't know. We're going to get in here and we'll see. We've got at least one American, maybe two, three possibly. But that one looks promising. Let's take a look. All right, very last roll. I've laid it down and we're going to find out together here. And that is just incredible. That is our sixth silver of the box. This one is a 1962, another 80% silver dime. This is my absolute high record. I had four before. I think I've done that twice in dimes. Most of the time it's zero. But today we've got six, including we've got one in the 50s, a bunch in the 60s. This is just been an, this has been an incredible hunt. We got tons and tons of stuff here. I uh, can't wait to just sort of wrap up and see, but we got to see what else is in this one. We're not quite done yet. So that last roll has been hunted. The box is done. It was incredible. I'll give you a wrap up in just one second. All right. Well, I have to say that was a fantastic hunt. I've got all of the finds lined up here. So let's just take a quick peek, a little recap. We got 51 U.S. dimes, including that 22 on the top. So a whole roll of American dimes. That's crazy. More than we normally get for sure. We got three other foreigns. That 1992 Barbados 10 cents. That five Rappen from Switzerland, 1971. And that Singapore 10 cents. So that was really cool. I got a whole line up here of nicer looking old older blue nose so there's a 78 79 an 80 and 81 there's an 88 a 91 a couple 2017s and a small stack of 2022s i think i got one last time we'll just see if there are any worth keeping there are some really fantastic looking ones in our miscellaneous category of course we have that somewhat defaced 2015 dime um Another miscellaneous or interesting find is this 2019 that really does look like it's missing one of those um, plate, plated layers. I'm not sure. It just it looks pretty uniform on both sides of the coin. So I'll hold that aside. Again, let me know what you think is happening with this one, if it's just some kind of a chemical treatment, but it looks pretty good. In terms of those Blue Nose commemoratives, we got a whole bunch. We got 22 Blue Nose under sale the non-color version, and then we got 12 of the color blue nose. And I think that might be our uh, record haul for both of those. But speaking of record hauls, our record haul of note this time is getting six silver dimes. My personal record, 50% better than I've done before. I've gotten four a couple of times, but this time we got a 1953. So awesome finding a 50s dime. We got a 61 and two 62s. Those, all four of those are 80% silver. And then we got two 1967s, including this really bright, shiny one on the right. And those are either 50 or 80%, and I just don't know. But that was 
an incredible hunt. I really hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give the video a like. Please subscribe to the channel, Catterall Hunter, if you haven't already done that. I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you're interested in getting some gear to do your own coin roll hunts, look in the video description. You'll find links uh, to Amazon.ca and Amazon.com for some of the gear that I use, including my scope, my um, scale, and other things. So, again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you again next time.